Hello gardeners, my name is Lindsay and I'm a Canadian gardener here who is currently playing Russian roulette with her spinach and some very cold late October temperatures. Uh, it's been a very eventful 48 hours. I think I have gotten most of my spinach to survive the last 48 hours, uh, but we're about to find out. I haven't actually looked yet this morning. I'll share with you a little bit of what has taken place and where I found my biggest challenges with just keeping you know temperatures and things like that warmer on my plants it actually hasn't been the evenings it hasn't been the nighttime temperatures it's been during the day i have not been able to be home to manage opening and closing the low tunnel and so that's actually where i think i did the most damage with my plants but i will back up to two days ago so our temperature dropped down, not last night, but the night before, it got down to minus eight Celsius. And that that's pretty cold. That's generally colder than spinach is comfortable with. However, I covered all of this up and everything was really happy. So even though it got down to minus eight degrees Celsius in the morning, I've got a little thermometer guy inside here that's inside the house so I can see what's going on. And I knew when I woke up yesterday morning that everything was still happy because I hadn't even hit minus two degrees Celsius. It was at, I believe it was one point, minus 1.7 Celsius is what the temperature was when I woke up yesterday morning. So I was pretty excited to see that. That's, that's always a good thing. But the challenge came was, I had to leave all day yesterday. So I was gone from 8.30 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. And if you're not um, experienced with low tunnels and greenhouses and things like that, they're not set in and forget it for the most part. You have to be around to sort of manage opening and closing them. Leaving for 13 hours is a really bad idea, but I had to do it. That was just the way things went yesterday. So I was really hedging my bets. I uncovered the low tunnels. So yesterday I had just plastic with the sheets over top, sort of kind of what you're seeing here. I took the sheets off and I cracked the plastic just a little bit. So I opened it up a little bit across the front because what happens when the sun hits these things, the temperature inside rises quite significantly. And so even though the morning was still freezing when I left for the office, there's a very real thing that at high noon that this could get too warm and I could cook out my spinach. Um, even though we were getting up to about six degrees during the day, I was a little bit worried about that. So there's a big extreme that you have to work with and why it's a good idea to be around and pay attention, but I couldn't. So I estimated on what I thought was going to happen, took action and did that. I was hoping that I would, or that the temperatures would not drop as quickly as they did last night before I could get home and cover everything up again. And that didn't go as planned. So I got home at about 9.30 p.m. last night. The temperature underneath the low tunnel, which was still a little bit open and I hadn't covered up, it was actually almost minus three degrees. And so that means that at 9.30 p.m. last night, it was actually colder than the whole previous night. So that's not good. I was basically would it be starting out the night already like not in a great place. So instead of um, just covering up and leaving, I took a few extra steps last night to help things get through the night and it worked. So what I did, um, what I'll share with you underneath here is I have plastic, so greenhouse plastic. I've got bed sheets over top of that, but also inside underneath. I used my um, row cover fabric, that fabric that you use to keep the bugs off of your plants. I laid that right on top of my spinach. So they've got, they're kind of tucked in underneath there. Then I've got a couple more layers on top. And I was really excited to see that after I took that step and I went and looked at my little thermometer inside, um, I had gained 0.2 of a degree, which I know is not a lot, but I stopped the temperature from continuing to drop and by just insulating the earth and that thermal mass from the earth, it brought the temperature up a tiny little bit. So that was really encouraging, but I really wanted to hedge my bets and make sure that I could get through the night. Cause as I said, I was starting off the early night last night, way colder than it had gotten the whole night underneath the previous. So that's not a good thing. So what I did is I opted to increase my thermal mass inside. So I took a couple of buckets, I think roughly like three gallon pails, and I filled them up with the hottest tap water um, that we have, which is 
borderline boiling. <laughs> it's pretty hot. So I filled up a couple of those and I stuck those buckets underneath here with everything tucked in. Right away, within 20 minutes of me sticking those buckets in there, I had gained a degree. So temperature had gone up by one degree. And with an hour of me doing that, I went from almost minus three degrees all the way to zero. It was hovering at zero when I finally went to bed last night. So I was very excited about that because that sort of reversed, um, you know, me not being able to cover it up early enough. I was able to sort of put it back to a place that I knew it was probably gonna get through the night. And right now, it's minus five degrees outside. You might be able to tell by my semi-frozen hair. <laughs> my fingers are frozen right now. But underneath here, when I got up, it was minus 1.9. So it was at about that minus two again. So it worked. It was actually still warmer underneath here than it was at 9.30 p.m. last night when I got home from it being wide open all day. And so, yeah, so I'm fairly confident that everything is happy and good to go underneath there. The damage that I mentioned that I think has taken place actually happened while the low tunnel was open, probably like early evening yesterday. The wind chill got up and I was outside with a flashlight in my teeth and trying to get everything set up. So it was kind of hard to tell, but it did look like uh, along sort of the front edge of things where I had it open. It looked like there was some frost damage on those leaves. That was kind of what I was seeing. Again, I haven't checked yet today, so I don't really know if there actually was or if that was just what it appeared to be in the dark while I was trying to navigate everything. But I will find out and I will show you. And for today, what I'm going to do, because I do have to leave and go to the office again and I'm gonna be gone, you know, for a full work day, is I have phoned my mom and I've asked her to come over here late morning um, in, and just untuck these a little bit and then they'll be open for the afternoon and then I'll be home and I can cover them again. Now, that is, that's the main criteria when you're you're growing under low tunnels is you need to be around or you need to have someone who can help you out and manage that. So I'm pretty lucky most of my schedule in the week I get to sort of determine and I can cater around my plants but today I have phoned my plant grandma and I've asked her to come and assist me um, because I don't want to leave three layers of fabric on this as it is for the whole day but I'm definitely not ready to uncover them right now it's far too chilly out. So yeah, that's what's happening with my spinach, my Russian roulette, Canadian gardening style. That's just how it goes when you're cold season growing. Um, yeah, uh, just for a little bit of background as well. Spinach is typically okay up to about minus six Celsius. So if I hit below minus six Celsius underneath my low tunnel, then it'd be pretty risky. I might even need to like double up a few layers to hopefully avoid that. But that's sort of where the line is drawn with the hardiness of spinach and cold temperatures. And as I said, I've been able to keep it in and around minus like two, minus three underneath here with sheets, layers, thermal mass from my buckets and all that kind of stuff. So based on that, I knew I was okay, but I was very worried last night when I got home from teaching and I saw that it was already much, much colder under there than I wanted to start out the night with. Using those buckets of hot water brought the temperature up by almost three degrees, which is significant, actually more than I was expecting, but awesome. And I think it allowed everything to get through the night tonight, but we will see. And I will share that with you. So here's a quick look at my main low tunnel. We've got the plastic underneath with the ribbing supporting everything and then the sheets on top. Doesn't look very pretty with the sheets, but hey, it works. So let's take a peek at what's actually taking place underneath slowly as I uncover everything. There's the row cover fabric that is just laying right on top of the spinach. And it actually looks really, really good even the ones that were sticking out of the edge and not covered very well. I have to say, I am super surprised. There's the, one of the buckets that I had um, filled with boiling water last night. There in the distance, you can kind of see some shard that I didn't cover, didn't have enough fabric. This little setup is actually kind of funny. I didn't want to cut any of my other plastic that I have, and this is actually a shower curtain that is plastic. And those look really good. 
even though they were sticking out and probably probably got the most cold out of any. Everything looks perfect. Well, I have to say I'm extremely surprised, but in the dark last night, I thought that there was gonna be some destruction. So thank you for sticking around. Hit that like button and the subscribe button. It helps out exponentially to send out the video to others who might be interested in learning how to cold season grow in our lovely Canadian weather here. I hope you have a beautiful day gardeners and we will see you again soon.